I think the biggest threat today to your spiritual health is expressive individualism. We have fitties. That's feelings, instincts, desires, and intuitions. Taken together, these visceral fitties are also called the self. Expressive individualism says that this self has ultimate authority in human identity. They must be prioritized over your reason. The Bible, natural law, social norms. The good person is not the moral person, the humble person, the altruistic person. Rather, the good person is the authentic person who lives out his own truth. Expressive individualism is a political matter, not just a personal one. If you violate a person's basic human rights, their expression of their fitties, you're hindering the full expression of that person's self. So is it always bad to express my inner self? And the answer is no. The reason you have fitties is because God created them in you. Sin distorts and misdirects our fitties. Christians are able to live according to God-approved fitties. The mature Christian, he's a man who brings his fitties under the governance of the Lord Jesus Christ. So this idea of the primacy of your fitties, you can go back and see this in Rousseau. Because he said the self is born pure and innocent, but society corrupts the self. The Romantic movement embraced Rousseau's declaration. But the transcendentalists, they believe that man found truth by looking within himself when he gave voice to what he called the deity inside of him. Darwin's evolutionary naturalism repudiated the idea that the cosmos was ordered by some authoritative principle or by a deity. So man did not really discover truth, he constructed it. Uh, man's goal, Freud says, physical, emotional, and sexual gratification. As late as 1960, uh, most Americans were confident, they were optimistic. The tumultuous and disappointing 1960s and 1970s left Americans weary of trying to make their nation great. Many retreated into themselves and tried to at least make themselves feel great. Right around 1980, the sociologist Robert Bella invented the term expressive individualism. He saw Americans who were increasingly separated from family, religion, and calling as sources of authority, duty, and moral example. This is when Americans coin phrases like, it can't be wrong when it feels so right. Do, do you realize that more Americans have left churches since 2000 than the combined total of new converts who professed a faith in Christ in the first great awakening, the second great awakening, and the Billy Graham evangelistic rallies all combined. Expressive individualism nurtures the kind of self-interested individualism that both the founders and Tocqueville believed would kill the Republic. Publics fail when unvirtuous citizens use the government to exploit other citizens who just happen to lose the elections. The mark of a Christian is that he obeys God regardless of what his fitties say. You and I do not practice biblical Christianity if our old sin-corrupted fitties drive our lives. Following our sin-corrupted fitties can lead to pleasures, but they're temporary and they're shallow. Following Christ leads to true satisfaction and lasting fulfillment. The Bible models believers managing and even rebuking their own emotions. We do not practice biblical Christianity if we are prisoners to our feelings. Do not let your emotions tyrannize you. But before expressive individualism leads to things like transgenderism, well, it leads to little girls dressed like the Princess Elsa, prancing across the living room while singing the lines from the movie Frozen. It's time to see what I can do to test the limits and break through. No right, no wrong, no rules for me. I am free. Let it go, let it go. Expressive individualism 
first leads to a Christian woman who's weary of the Bible's rules. She's tired of being good, so she wants to start feeling good. Put off the old self with its practices, put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. The most effective response to America's increasingly post-Christian culture is vibrant and muscular local churches. Look, a healthy local church may be the only place where non-Christians will see a diverse community where people love one another, are subject to one another, forgive one another, and bear one another's burdens. How do we know that this church-based strategy will work? Because Jesus said it would. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it.